Welcome to another exciting episode of chemistry here at Spain Park High School. Today is, what, Wednesday, February the 22nd. And if you are enjoying these exciting videos, please feel free to subscribe to my channel and hit that like button. Anyway, today we are going to be mainly practicing the stoichiometry problems that we learned about yesterday. Now, for those of you that work here, but you maybe watched the video for those of you who were here, what is our mantra? What is our, our phrase that we're going to be using as our guide for this entire unit? Mass to moles to moles to mass. Mass to moles to moles to mass. We're going to say it forwards and backwards. Mass to moles to moles to mass. Isn't it so be mass to moles to moles mass? Mass to moles to moles to mass backwards. Okay? Now, we learned, we learned in first semester how to change the mass of a given to the moles of a given using the molar mass of the given. And how do I find the molar mass of the given? Like the periodic table. Periodic table. It's the red number on the periodic table. It's an element. It's just that number. But if it's a compound, we add up all the red numbers. We remember how to do that. So the molar mass here, to go from mole to mass to moles, and then going back from moles to mass, we know how to do that. Okay? The only thing we're adding in new is this mole ratio. Now, we learned in the last unit how to write a balanced equation. We know how to, to get the ratio. We just have to look at the coefficients from that balanced equation. That's going to be our mole ratio. That's how we're going to go from moles of given to moles of unknown. So, if you look at that sheet that I just gave to you, Now, juniors, if some of you have not made up your test corrections yet, from uh, not, it's, I think it's the equations test, or it might have been the one before that. I think it's the one before that. Okay, today is finally an AO that you can move. So you need to come in. Yes, you can come in an AO and ask questions today. Okay, why are you wobbling that? Okay, so he's not talking yet. I know, but whoever's watching that is going to go to see soon. So, <laughs> all right. I'm sorry for you two people that are going to see this video. All right. And by the way, we need to continue to uh, say a little short prayer for Miss Frederick. She's still feeling very much under the weather. Um, and I know that y'all are desperately wanting her to come back. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so no. she could be in charge instead of me. Okay. So if I'm looking at this first equation right here on your worksheet, I'm having my balanced equation. Now just remember, C4H10 is what type of compound from last unit? C4H10. It's a hydrocarbon. It's got carbon and hydrogen. So in a hydrocarbon, if it's plus O2, what does that mean is happening to it? Combustion. Combustion is burning. And remember, it always makes CO2 and water. Okay? So we have our balanced equation. By the way, this is butane. That's what's in like in a, a lighter, a big lighter. That's what you're burning when you use a big light or butane, C4H10, okay? So what is my mole ratio then between the butane and the oxygen? For every two butanes, how many oxygens do I need? 13. That's what the balanced equation is telling me. It's telling me the, the ratio of things that are combining, but it's a mole ratio, not a gram ratio. So my mole ratio is going to be 2 to 13. For every two butanes, I'm going to need 13 oxygens. But it's moles, not grams. It's a mole ratio. Molar ratios. Okay? So what's the oxygen to CO2 going to be? 13 to 8. It's just the coefficients, the mole ratios from the balanced equation, it's your coefficients from the given and the unknown. So what's the oxygen to water? 13 to 10. 13 to 10. Butane to CO2? 
2 to 8. You don't have to reduce this because when you plug it in, we're just going to multiply it. Now, if you want to reduce the 1 to 4, that's fine, but I think it's easier just whatever the numbers are, that's what we're going to use in our mole ratio right here. This is the step that we're adding in. This is our new step, just getting that mole ratio. But this is why we must have the balanced equation because that's what gives us the mole ratio. So step one of it is to always write the balanced equation for the reaction that we're trying to work on. And then lastly, the butane to the water. Two to, Two to ten. Okay? So our mole ratio is nothing more than the coefficients from the balanced equation. Is everybody good there? Okay? So let's apply that then, looking at number two. Given the following equation, 2KClO3 goes to 2KCl plus O2. This was the reaction that we did in the lab when we did the percentage of oxygen. We heated this up. Remember, we put a little triangle over the arrow to represent heat. We heated this up. We drove off the oxygen. The weight went down. We were able to calculate the percentage of oxygen in the KClO3. All right? So, decomposition reaction. But now it says how many moles of oxygen can be produced by letting 12 moles of KClO3 react? We have four steps to solving a stoichiometry problem. Step one was what? Oh, let me get it out. Let me get it out. Um, Step one? Write a, balanced write a balanced equation. Check. Step two? Just the facts. What's given in what oh, yeah, just the facts. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. What am I given? What am I looking for? So what am I given in this, and what am I looking for? You're given the 12 moles of KC. 12 moles, so that's my given. So I'm going to write that right over this here, 12 moles. And I'm going to use the unit because I need to know where am I starting in my process. Okay? And what am I looking for? How many? Moles of oxygen. Moles of oxygen. This is my unknown. So again, I'm going to come over here and say X moles, right on top of the oxygen. So I know that that's what I'm looking for. Because there's that old saying that I made up not too long ago that says, if you don't know what you're looking for, you'll probably never find it. If you don't know where you're going, you'll probably never get this. Then the two fun ones. If you aim at nothing, you'll always hit, hit it. You'll always hit it. Okay? If you aim at nothing, you'll always hit it. And the oxygen is slow, but the earth is patient. That's deep. There was an old Tom Selleck movie, old, old, old Tom Selleck movie where he traveled all over and got, finally got to the top of a mountain in Nepal and got to this, this famous guru just looking for advice in life. And that was the advice that, you know, in the whole movie, I mean, the whole movie was a struggle to get there and he finally gets there and that was the advice the, the guru gave him is, the oxen is slow, but the earth is patient. It's always just kind of stuck in my head. <laughs> It was just kind of like, uh, seriously, I came all this way, and that's, that's the best I hit. But I probably wouldn't recommend that. I can't remember the name of it. Okay, so my given and my unknown. You have to know what you're looking for. So now, what do I do? Well, where? Well, first off, where am I in my process? Look, I'm over here. You're saying. Rocco, over here. Oh, oh yes. Okay. <laughs> so where am I starting and where am I ending? Am I given mass? No. Wait. What am I given? You're given moles. Moles. So I'm starting here. Huh? What am I asking for? Uh, wait, hold on. Moles on moles unknown. Moles. So I'm only going here to here. Oh, okay. oh so you don't have to complete all four. Oh. This is my GPS. This is my stoichiometry roadmap. Where am I starting? Where am I going? Okay. So I only, I'm only i going from moles to moles, so I don't have to use the molar masses or anything. I just need that mole ratio because that's, that's my conversion between given and unknown. So I start with the given, 12 moles, KClO3 <coughs> times, what's my mole ratio between the O2 and the KClO3? Mm -hmm. Okay, it's, it's a two to three ratio from the balanced equation, but it's always unknown over known. Because I have moles of KClO3 on the top, so I want moles of KClO3 on the bottom. So it's three moles of O2 for every two moles. K 
KClO3. So now my moles of KClO3 cancel. Now notice again, moles of KClO3 is on top, so I know that moles of KClO3 wants to go on the bottom. But it's always unknown over known. So I, the question is asking for moles of O2. I have moles of O2, so I know I'm finished. So I can just simply say, okay, well, this is going to equal 18.00 moles of O2. And when you give me your answer, you need to always have a label, a unit, and a, uh, a what it's of. Okay? So we're just today, we're learning how to follow the yellow brick road. And hopefully there's no lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. Are you the tin man? <laughs> no, I have a heart. Uh. <laughs> oh my god, I can't even hold the heart. Yeah. I, I think Lincoln would kind of like something to do with you and you would have been I'm the wizard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that right. was good. Alright, so we all have this? Bueno. All right, so let's look at the next one then. Okay, I'm only going to do a, a few more, and then I'm going to let you loose to do these. Okay? It's a little crooked. So now, given here's my, okay, four steps to solving. Step one, write a balanced equation. Check. I gave that to you. All right. Step two, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. It's from Dragnet, it's from an old show. You watch the video from me yesterday and you'll understand. Okay? <laughs> so, what am I giving? What am I giving? 1.2 moles of ammonia. So I'm giving this. And again, I write the unit so I know where I'm starting here. Oh, um, okay. I got where you're starting. Okay? What am I looking for? How many grams of H2O? X grams of this. So you're going all the way to the um, math of one. Okay, so over here with me, Rocco. So I'm starting with moles right. this time, but I'm going to grams. Okay. Right? Right. You gotta know what you're looking for. Agreed. If you ever want to find it. Where am I starting? Where am I ending? I'm given moles, I'm asked for mass. Moles of one thing, mass of another. Okay? So, what do I start with? Moles of given. Which is going to be 1.20 moles and H3 times. So, I can't just go straight to mass of unknown because I have moles of given. So, say what, Lola? The mole ratio. What's the mole ratio? 6 over 4. Okay, it's four and six, right? And it's always unknown over known, plus I have moles of ammonia on top, so I want moles of ammonia on the bottom, so it cancels. So it's gonna be six moles of water for every four moles and H3. Are we all good there? Perfect. Is the coefficients from the balanced equation unknown over known? So moles of NH3 cancel. So if I were to stop right there, this would be just like the previous question, I would know how many moles of water got produced. It's 1.5, so it would really be 1.8 moles. Okay? But I want the mass. So now to go from the moles of water to mass of water, what do I use? Hmm. Use the molar mass of? The mass of, hold on, the unknown. Which is? Um, Six moles H2O. Well, okay, but we want the mass of one mole. 18.02. 18.02. The molar mass is always per one mole. Okay. Okay, we've used the six already. <clears throat> molar mass is always per one mole, so it's 18.02 grams over one mole. So moles cancel, <coughs> which is going to give me grams of water, which is what the question is asking for. So now if it's on the top, you multiply. If it's on the bottom, you divide. 
1.2 times 6 divided by 4 times 18.02 equals 32.44. 32, so that's 32.4. Since there's only three sig figs here, we'll go 32.4. And that's going to be grams of water. That's how many. So if I start with 1.2 moles, and I combine it with oxygen, basically burn it, I should expect to get 32.4 grams of water produced. Okay? So let's see if you can do B. Oh boy, all right. See if you can do B. Where are you starting? Where are you ending? Okay. on one thing. Okay, yeah. if it's N-O, where am I looking? I'm looking at N and I'm adding N them up. The red number, Okay. 14.01. And I'm adding it with? With oxygen, which is 16.00. 16 so 30.00. 30 0 0 so 30 You'll always have a periodic table. And if you don't have one, you can just look at the inside cover of the textbooks that are all right there in front of you. So then we always, so then we put it over 10 grams. That's right. Yeah. Well, you want, again, it's going to be times one mole over 30.10 grams. Oh. You're always going to go times, ratio, times. I understand now. Set it up using the units.
this could be. Did you get 1.332? I feel like I did. What did you get? 375 for one month. That doesn't sound right. I got 1.3. I did, okay, you get your yeah, look. Start off the grams. Right, to mold. went to mold. Using, what was the mold of ash you used? 30.01. Okay, so did you multiply or divide? Divide. Oh, I multiply. That's what it was. Okay. And then you did times four. Well, again, which one goes on top? No. It's, which it's one goes on top? Oh, unknown. Which one goes on top? <sighs> I don't know why. <laughs> it's super easy. From balanced equation. <laughs> it's so easy. Yeah. Okay. Can I can't be right. 1.6. I got 0.42 volts. 0.42 volts. Okay. I got 1.6. Why is this happening? Maybe it's your calculator. These two cancel out. These two cancel out. All right, so let's look at this. This is, it should not be taking you 30 minutes to do this. Sorry. Okay? But let's just look. Let's break it down. Okay, we're going to have more time to practice. Again, how many moles of oxygen? So when I'm here, I want to go how many moles of oxygen? So for part B, my unknown is moles of oxygen. How many moles of oxygen are needed to react with excess NH3? That's just nice. But here's to produce 10 grams of NO. So my given is 10 grams of NO. Now here's something very important. So I see a lot of y'all still working, but I need your full attention right here on me. Okay? It does not matter where the given is and where the unknown is. You can have a given here and an unknown there. You can have a given here and an unknown over there. You can have both your given and unknown as products. You can have your given as a product, your unknown as a reactant like this one. It, you're gonna always do the same thing. It doesn't matter whether the given's a reactant or a product, and if the unknown is a reactant or a product. You're always gonna go mass to moles, to moles to mass, okay? So this one is a product. We're going here, so where am I starting in my process? Moles given. I mean, mass given. Mass given. Where am I going to? Moles unknown. Moles of unknown. Okay? So I'm going to start with my 10 grams of NO. Okay? What would be the name of that? Nitrogen oxide. Or no. Nitrous oxide. It's not, it's not nitrate because it's not an ion. There's no charge on it. It's not, it's not one of our polyatomic ions because it doesn't have a charge. Ions are charged. Right. If it's charged, if it's an ion, it'll have a charge written. Nitrogen oxide. But how many oxides, oxides do we have? One. Nitrogen monoxide. monoxide. There you go. Time. So how do I go to moles? You put it. Um, you go um, one mole over thirty grams. Thirty point zero one grams. Okay. So if I was to stop there, that tells me how many moles of NO I have. Right. But my balance equation tells me for every four moles, I need five moles of this. So put five over four. Because it's always what, Rocco? Unknown over known. Unknown over known. Five moles of oxygen for every four moles of NO. Now, again, without just memorizing that, I have moles of NO on top. I know moles of NO has to go on the bottom to cancel. Whatever's on the top here goes on the bottom of the next one. So, I only need moles of oxygen, so that's what I have, moles of oxygen. So as they say, stick a fork in it, because it's done. So your answer should be one. So now you go 10 divided by 30 times five divided by four equals, I get 0.416. What? Oh, yeah, yeah. Three sig figs, 0.416 moles, of oxygen. Rocco, are you following this? I'm following. With the camera? Oh, 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 yeah. <laughs>
Yes, the camera's been on it earlier. Okay. Uh, 10 point, okay, 10.0 times. Divided by, if it's on the top, you multiply, on the bottom, you divide. Right, you divide. 10 divided by 30.01 right. times 5 okay. divided by 4 equals. That's why. I didn't know you had to divide it by 4. Well, that's what the 4 in the bottom, that's what this divided by sign means. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna do one more. Okay. Are we starting to see the process? Yes. Yeah, we're starting to see. Okay, we're gonna to practice today and, and half of tomorrow. Just pr keep practicing, practicing these. And I, I only have to add in one simple little extra thing, one concept and one more math thing, and the math thing's super easy. And then we're done with this unit. Okay, so number four. Step one, write a balanced equation. Check. Right. Step two, just the facts, ma'am, just the facts. What am I given? What am I looking for? Uh, you're 10, 1.20 times 10 to the second. Okay, so if that's times 10 to the second, what's an easier way of saying this number? 120. 120, right? right? 10 to the 2 is 100, so this is a 120. So I'm going to say 120 grams, but it's three sig figs of NA2O. And what's it asking for? It's asking for NaOH. How yeah. many grams of NaOH? And that's why I always want to put the unit on my X so I know what I'm looking for. Okay? All right, good deal. So where am I in the process here, Rocco? Where am I in the process here? You are... Where am I starting? Starting at grams given. Which is? Mass given. The mass given. What's the question asking for? Somebody else. The of? The unknowns. Unknowns. I'm going to have to go the, the full nine yards here, right? Oh, man. So I'm going to have to go from mass of given to the moles of given, to the moles of the unknown, to the mass of the unknown. All right. So let's just do this together. So I'm going to start with my 120 grams of Na2O sodium oxide. It's ionic, so I don't use prefixes. Times what? What okay. do I need to go to periodic moles? Periodic table. Go to the periodic tables. 22.99 right. times 2. Right. So That's basically 44. 23 is 46, oh, yeah, 46. plus 16 is 62, 62 yeah. but if you want to be picky, you can say 61.98. So 62. <laughs> but where does grams need to go? On the bottom. So I'm going to say one mole over 61.98 grams. Now if you put 62, that's fine, but you're going to get the, basically the same answer. So that converted grams of Na2O to moles of Na2O. So I now am to here. So now how do I go to moles of unknown? Moles, the ratio. Now I want to go to moles of NaOH. Ratio. And which one goes on top, Rocco? Unknown. Okay. <coughs> so it's going to be times two moles of NaOH over one mole Na2O. So I stop right there. What unit would my answer come out in? Of? NaOH. But I don't want moles of NaOH, I want grams of NaOH. So how do I go from moles to grams? Molar mass. 22.99 plus 1.01 .01 makes 24 plus 16. This comes out to exactly 40. So where does is, where is grams need to go on this one? Top. Because moles is on the top now, so moles goes on the bottom, so it's 40.00 grams over one mole. And so now I have grams of NaOH, which is what I'm looking for, so I know I'm finished. Again, it's on the top you multiply, on the bottom you divide. 120 divided by 61.98 times 2 times 40 equals 154.9. Okay, so how many sig figs should we have? Three. So therefore 154.9 equals? 155. 155. Looking for grams of an AOH. So. And 
that's the one unit that's left. Hmm. Makes perfect sense. Though. Mask the moles to moles the mass. But the only thing that's new is this mole ratio. All right, so let's use the rest of the period. Okay, but I do want to point out one thing. on this one right here s8 <coughs> if i give you o2 how do i calculate the molar mass of o2 that's 16 times 2 right it's 32. so what's the molar mass of s8 going to be no, well how are we going to get it eight times the 32 which is the molar mass of sulfur do i multiply the iron by eight no, because it's eight out in front means there's eight individual FEs. S subscript eight means they're eight bonded together. That's one molecule right there. Okay? You only use the subscripts. You don't use the coefficients. The coefficients are only used in the mole ratio. Okay? So when you're doing molar mass, you use the subscripts. You don't multiply this one by eight. It's always molar masses per one mole, but this is part of the molecule. Okay? All right, the rest of the time is yours to work.